All right, that'll be PL right there. Let me get over to YouTube. It's not coming up on YouTube. Well, it doesn't tell you how to. Let me see. videos hey ushers and ushers and greeters yeah. how y'all doing um i got to all right, real quick, I'm not going to hold you all this, uh, this on here. Uh, I just got everybody on. First of all, let me say thank you to, to everyone who has adapted to the change during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, YouTube is not up yet. I got to figure it out. So, you know, but, so what you putting on? Thank you, bro. So, uh, real quickly. Uh, Am I that, on? Hello, everyone. How are you? Can anyone tell you, tell me what I'm thinking? As I sit here trying to figure out where you are, who knows what's in my head right now? Type it in the chat if you know. La, 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 la. I am on. Hello. What is? What do you think I'm thinking in my head? That's what I want you all to text in the little chat in the comments. What am I thinking right now? La la la. La la la. Well, we have a topic for tonight. I decided to do um, second and fourth Tuesdays opposed to the hour before Bible study, just to break it up some, since we're doing everything virtual. So tonight's topic is disciplining your ears. Disciplining your ears. Can you type that in the chat to let me know you're hearing me? Disciplining your ears. When you discipline something, you like regulate, you direct, you instruct. So we're talking tonight about how you can discipline your ears, how you can regulate your ears to properly hear, how you can direct your ears to properly hear, how you can instruct your ears to properly hear. And it's tying right into properly perceiving people's performances. You've got to properly hear so that you know your next steps, so that you stay in the will of the Father, so that you stay positive, so that you stay demonstrating godly holiness and righteousness. All right? All right, so it's up to you to make your ears hear properly. I'm getting ready to read Proverbs. I'm starting at chapter number one, verse number two. I'm going down to verse number five. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline. In the book of Proverbs, their purpose, there is referring to Proverbs. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined lives and successful lives, to help them do what is right, just, and fair. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple knowledge and discernment to the young doesn't matter how old you are let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser so although some of us may know a lot of information we may know a lot of have a lot of revelation we may know a lot of scriptures that scripture says let the wise listen 
and become wiser. So there's still an opportunity to gain more wisdom, to gain more insight, to gain more knowledge. And then they say, it says, let those with understanding receive guidance. Now at the top of the hour, usually it's at the end of class, but at the top of the hour, I'm going to give you a homework assignment. Today is January 12th. So we'll be together on the fourth Tuesday, whatever that date is. But the next Tuesday in the first Tuesday in February is going to be, I think I wrote it down, February 9th. And by then, that's the 29th day of, a, of your homework assignment. Your homework assignment starting today is to read a book of Proverbs every day. Because remember, the scripture says, you get if you're wise, you get even wiser. It teaches you discipline, right? And so if you're reading Proverbs every day, you're gaining more and more wisdom, becoming brighter and brighter, more knowledgeable of the things of God. Top of the hour, that's your homework. So anyone who chimes in later, oh, you know what? Someone can type in the chat that there's a homework assignment to read the entire book of Proverbs beginning today up until the next time we're together for the first Tuesday. I mean, for the second Tuesday. Now, we'll be together every second and fourth Tuesday. So when we get together on the fourth Tuesday of this month, you'll still be in the midst of reading your chapters in Proverbs. But when we get together the second Tuesday in February, you should have finished. Now, on the second Tuesday in February is the 29th day. There are 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. But that's okay. You can just add a, a second day to two different of your days. It'll be fine. Some of the Proverbs chapters are short. They're not long at all. So as you're reading through and you notice, oh, this is a short chapter. Oh, here's another one. Kind of keep those together, you know, read those together because you have to allot time to get those last two in because the expectation or the homework assignment said finish, be finished reading by the time we get back together second Tuesday in February. Got that? I hope you all got that. How can I tell if I'm 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 still working? Are they listening? I mean, are they there? So this is what I was asking you all to type in. You know, I like interaction. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I don't see you. I don't have any responses. I see that you all wrote some responses in the beginning, but this bothers me. But anyway. All right, so today we're talking about Disciplining your ears, regulating, directing, and instructing your ears. This is the year of rain, the year of the takeover. If you train your ears to properly hear, you'll properly hear from God. You'll properly hear what you need to hear when you're listening to others. And so sometimes people say things you don't necessarily need you don't necessarily need to, sorry, the message is popping up. You don't necessarily need to receive what someone's saying if it's negative, but if it's positive, if it's going to be inspirational, motivational, encouraging, you got to be able to properly hear that. All right, so I'm going to remind you of a couple of scriptures that I use when I minister properly perceiving people's performances. One of them is Colossians 3 and 2, set. Set your mind on things above, not on things below. Set. Remember, when I said, we talked about set, put it there, leave it there, have it stay. Don't move it. Don't change it. Set your mind on things. Below. So that, that disciplining your ears to hear, you have to discipline your ears to hear by setting your mind on things above. And from time to time, your mind is not going to be on things above. From time to time, your mind is going to be on things of this world. And you've got to be smart enough. You've got to be connected to the spirit of God enough. You've got to listen well enough to realize, mm, I'm not doing it. I'm, I, 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 my mind's not set on things above. My mind, that thought I just had was proven to me that my mind is set on things of this world. Regroup, get it together, keep it going. Set your mind on things above. But the more you set, the less you have to reset. The reset is it, it, it requires or it comes because you've allowed yourself to, to veer off, to fall off, right? 
And so everyone can say, been there, done that. But, but, but be sick of saying, been there, done that. Oh, yeah, that's me. Yeah, no. Because it, 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 it drains you when you have to now regroup and refocus, redirect yourself. It, it takes training, right? If you just set and stay set, it makes life easier. All right, the benefits of spiritual ears. I'm going to give you a few benefits of spiritual ears. There are five exactly. One benefit is you gain godly wisdom. Mm. We all need godly wisdom so that we're able to discern what God wants us to do. Remember, don't conform to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so you'll know what that good, perfect, and pleasing will of God is. You won't know what God wants you to do if you don't go back to the previous scripture, Colossians 3, 2, setting your mind on things above. But then you won't have godly wisdom if your ears aren't properly hearing. You've got to properly hear. Because sometimes even when you improperly hear, you can just redirect that improper hearing. Right? What? So, so what would you like me to do right now? Pastor Vance wants someone to go into the band app. Go into the band app and put that we are only on Facebook Live tonight. We are not broadcasting on YouTube. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm in Facebook right now. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Um, so the first benefit of spiritual ears is to gain godly wisdom. James 3 and 17 says, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. Remember I said this was a heavy hitter, all right? So we're talking about disciplining your ears. A benefit of disciplined ears or spiritual ears is that you are able to have wisdom from above, which is pure, right? It's, it's gonna be just, just even keel. It's nice, it's loving. It's happy. It's not bitter. It's just godly. And so the first benefit is you gain godly wisdom. It's peaceful. It doesn't matter what's going on. It stays in peace. It doesn't matter. It's gentle. It doesn't matter what someone says or does. It's gentle. All right. So a second benefit of spiritual ears is the ability to discern right from wrong. I think since Denise used this scripture on Sunday, James 4 and 7. Humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. But you got to resist. The second benefit of having spiritual ears is the ability to discern right from wrong. If you're not resisting the devil, resisting the enemy, because he comes with his trickery. He comes with his temptations. If you're not resisting, you won't be able to discern right from wrong. And the reason you won't be able to discern right from wrong is because now you're all over the place. You, you, you're hearing partially from God. You're hearing partially from Satan. You're all over the place. Got to be able to discern. Another benefit of having spiritual ears is a willingness to accept the word of God. Everyone doesn't accept the word of God. Isn't that funny? People who are in service every week. People who tune in to service every week. Some aren't willing to accept the word of God because sometimes it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't have to make sense. You, you, your goal is to trust what God says. And sometimes it doesn't make sense because you're not wise enough. You haven't allowed yourself to become wise enough. And so sometimes it won't make sense. That's okay. I trust God. So when something I read doesn't make sense, I tell myself then I need to study more. I tell myself, maybe I need to go on a fast. Because I, I want to get it. When I don't get it, I want to get it. What's that? I think that's the uh, Washington Post. They say, if you don't get it, you don't get it. 
If there's something I don't get, I want to get. So I'm going to do something, redirect, refocus, retrain, remove something, do something because I want to get it. I don't want the preacher preaching to me and I'm not understanding what he's saying. All right. So 1 Thessalonians 2.13, a willingness to accept God's word. And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which indeed at work in you, which is indeed, I'm sorry, at work in you who believe. A willingness to accept the word of God. You, you, Pastor Van said, I can't remember if he said it Sunday or if it was um, at a Bible study. And I feel like he was referring to the media ministry, saying, and I'm hoping that they're not doing this for me because they're supposed to be doing it for God. When you're accepting what God says, now you are able to discern. Oh, God said, God wants, I should, it, it's laid out. The Bible is our blueprint for life. It's laid out. Disciplining your ears. Another benefit of spiritual ears is to think, respond, and live in peace. Spiritual ears will have you peaceful no matter what's going on crazy around you. And we know there are some things going on crazy around us at this point in time. But listen, when you discipline your ears to hear, a benefit of having spiritual ears, spiritually disciplined ears, a benefit, peace. No matter what's happening in your house, no matter what's happening with your children, no matter what's happening with your money, no matter what's happening with your health, peace. But that's a benefit of disciplining your ears, having spiritual ears. Peace. Live in peace. Think in peace. Act in peace. Just letting peace reign all around you. Letting peace be the, the overseer of all you do. Imagine peace. Peace reigning in your marriages. Peace reigning in your relationships. Peace reigning in your mind. That's a benefit of having spiritual ears. How do you get spiritual ears? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm trying to train you tonight on disciplining your ears. When you discipline your ears, you're regulating them. You're directing them. You're, it's like you're instructing them. You're training your ears to hear properly. When your ears aren't disciplined, they don't hear the way that they should hear. This is the year of rain. The takeover. We need to reign and take over. But how are we to do that if we don't properly hear? We won't know what to do. We won't know where to go. We won't know what to take over. Not properly hearing will cause you to pursue something that God never ordained for your life. And then later, because it was never ordained for your life and it's causing you, it's causing you, he's causing you, she's causing you, causing you friction and turmoil and trouble. Remember that scripture said, when God has blessed you with it, it won't cause you any stress or strain. All right. Oops, I, I scrolled down. The fifth reason, and it's the final reason, a benefit of having spiritual ears. You can be a great example for the kingdom of God. Because people are watching how you respond. I say that all the time. People are watching. Pastor Vane says it all the time about the kids. You, you, you're like, where did they get that from? I didn't teach them that. They've been watching. You didn't have to physically teach. They just started watching. Mm, is that how you respond when someone does you wrong? Mm, is that how you respond when something's wrong? Mm, is that how you respond when trouble comes? They're watching. A benefit of having spiritual ears is you're allowing people to see you and give glory to the kingdom of God. You're a great example for the kingdom of God. Got to properly hear, properly discern. Got to instruct these things. These things, and the funny thing is, look, 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 they, they only are a fraction 
of our body. Just a little part of us. Just a little bit. They do a whole lot of work. All right, so Hebrews 12 and 14 says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Make every effort. Every effort. It didn't say try from time to time. It didn't say, uh, well, you know, if, if, if the opportunity presents itself, make every effort. When you make every effort, that means you're trying even when it's pulling everything from the inside. Every effort. Every effort says, I'm going to try my best to be at peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. What's the benefit of spiritual uh, ears? What? Isn't that great example for the Lord? Being at peace. And see, this scripture ties into number four. Number four was think, respond, and live in peace. And when Holy Spirit gave me the scripture, Hebrews 12, 14, I was like, ah, that ties right in. You being a great example. In four, they were seeing you living at peace. In four, they were seeing you think in peace. In four, they were seeing you just have the lifestyle of peace despite what's going on. And so five, because in four, you were demonstrating the lifestyle of peace. In five, now you're being a great example for the kingdom of God. Make every effort to be at peace. Every effort. Every effort. What's left out of every? Let me, let me define every. Every means, I'm looking it up. Each, all possible. Each and every, every single, all probable. Make every effort to live in peace. So do you mean to tell me living in peace is my decision? That Bible say make every effort to live in peace. It's the year of rain, the takeover. What are you going to bring? Got to start. Y'all, isn't it funny all this is up here? Which impacts and then causes your words and your actions to be whatever they're going to be. Remember I told you when you're properly hearing, you're perceiving, and then you're organize, organizing your next steps. What are your next steps going to be after you've heard? What are you going to do with what you hear? What are you going to do with what you hear tonight? What did you do with what you heard Sunday? What did you do with what you heard first Sunday? See, you 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 now have what did you do with what you heard Wednesday? You now have an arsenal of information just since the new year, the year of rain, the year of the takeover. What are you doing with it? Let's talk about ways God speaks. Because remember, we're talking about disciplining your ears to hear training them and instructing them in the things of God and the ways of God. Hmm. How does God speak? Of course, through his word. One is through his word. Two is through Holy Spirit. I kind of put those together. Hosea 14 and 9 says, whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. And the upright walk in them, but the transgressors stumble and fall. I told you we're not dealing with that part. We are the, the ways of the Lord are the right and the upright walk in them. We are the upright. We are the righteousness of God. Whoever is wise, let them understand. When you don't understand, I told you, you've got to do something to, to force your understanding. You think about it. When your kids are in school. And they come home and say, I didn't get it. Well, or, or they log off and say, in this era, I didn't get it. They, you, you can't just not get it. you Because whatever you don't get here is going to negatively impact your ability to get it there. Right? Everything connects. We call it cyclical in school. Everything connects. It builds upon the foundation is set. And then everything builds upon what was established. And if you don't get what was set, if you don't get what was built upon and established, you can't go to that next phase because you're missing out on something. If you don't understand, you can study more. Seek out more information. Seek out wisdom. Turn the TV off. There, there are times I, I will stop watching television or stop doing something else 
and go to my word because I don't like the way I responded to my husband. There are times when I turn the TV off and stop doing whatever else I may have doing because I didn't like that thought that came in my head. You don't, you don't allow yourself to just continue down that path. You don't understand? Make yourself understand. Whoever is discerning, let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right and the upright walk in them. Let me give you this, this, this uh, quote I found. God will speak to us more often as we learn to recognize his voice. Disciplining your ears. How do I know if it's God? How do I know that's God talking to me? You will, God will speak to us more as we learn to recognize his voice. He's speaking, but we don't even hear him. We expect to hear from God at church. Church is once a week. Twice for those of you all who are, you know, really seeking God. But God doesn't just speak on Sundays. He doesn't just speak on Wednesdays. What are you going to do with yourself for the rest of the days of the week? Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He wants to speak to us all through the week. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. God is still speaking. Are we listening? What prevents your listening? Then that, that's between you and the Lord. What, what causes you not to be able to properly hear? What causes you not to be able to discipline your ears to properly hear? That's an inner thing. And you've got to figure out what that is because it, we should always get to a place where we're wanting to challenge ourselves to do better, wanting to challenge ourselves to be better. I'm going to leave that right there. Discipline your ears to hear. Regulate your ears. You are in control. They are on you. I am in control of these. They can't just hear what I don't want them to hear. They can't just receive what I don't want them to receive. They just can't perceive what I don't want them to perceive. And if they're hearing wrong, if they're perceiving wrong, if they're taking in wrong, then I've got to regroup and retrain myself because I need to train them to hear because the way that they've been hearing have been screwing up my life or have been having my life on a roller coaster. The ups and the downs, the goods and the bads, the not so good. No. I am the righteousness of God. I should be able to prosper. I am supposed to prosper. I am supposed to be victorious. All right, so we're talking about ways that God speaks. I said one was his word. Two was through the spirit of God. Three is our conscience. Can you bring your napkin, please? <laughs> Our conscience. We have an inner sense of right and wrong. Now, the funny thing is about conscience, depending upon, you know, that whole scenario, those statistics I gave on first Sunday, really, really interesting because depending upon your exposure and your experiencing experiences and your upbringing, your conscience and somebody else's conscience is two different consciences. And so you think about what happened last week at the Capitol. Some people are genuinely thinking they're doing what's right. They opened my mind to people knowing right from wrong. I had just said, people know right from wrong. They know what they should and shouldn't be doing. <clears throat> Those people proved to me that that is not true. <laughs> mm. All right, so. Another way God speaks is our conscience. Romans 2 and 14 says, even Gentiles who do not have God's written law show that they know this law when they instinctively obey it. Then the Gentiles weren't connected to God, but there was some type of intrinsic motivation in them that caused them to obey it. You think about all the people who, who don't believe in Jesus Christ as Lord, but they have this intrinsic motivation to be nice and kind and helpful and giving to other people. Even the Gentiles who do not have God's written law show they know his law when they instinctively obey it, even without having heard it. 
We hear it all the time, so we should not have an excuse. 15 says, they demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts for their own conscience and thoughts either accuse them and tell them they are doing, they either accuse them or tells them they're doing right. So we, the conscience inside of us accuses or says we're doing right. That there's right and wrong. I feel like those of us connected to God know the difference between right and wrong. So, so that's my new uh, uh, thing I'll say in regards to people knowing right from wrong. Us who are connected to God have the spirit of God. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is alive and well in us. And just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he gives life to our mortal bodies by that same spirit living in us. That's what the scripture says. The spirit of God is on the inside of us, teaching us right from wrong. We know right from wrong. Now, I don't know about all those folks from last week. All right. Discipline your ears. Regulate them. Direct them. Instruct them. Another way that God speaks is through his creations. Now, when I was early in Christ, one of the things I would always do is if there was something that seemed impossible, Im impossible, <laughs> that's not like a fancy word, something that seemed impossible or unimaginable, I would remind myself that at first there was just me, then there was me and he, and then we created these three, right? At first there was just me, then there was me, me and he, and then we created three. And so when I was new in Christ and reading and sometimes it wasn't making sense and it seemed like, I don't know how in the world that's supposed to have been ha had happened. I reminded myself of one of the most miraculous things God did. And that was to allow us to procreate. And so my children were reminders of the miracle of God. The creations of my children reminded me God speaks. God speaks through the miracles. When you're riding down the street, and you see the wondrous of uh, the trees that are growing. You know, some trees are, they're monstrous. You think about passing oceans and lakes and rivers. Those are God's creations. And how great that is. All right, so Genesis 131. <sighs> love Genesis 131. I wonder if you know why I love Genesis 131. For God looked at what he had made and said it was good. I challenge you to go find a scripture that ties into your birthday. I, I feel at one with that scripture. God looked at what he, he had made and said it was good. Let it speak to you. But his creations, that's one way he speaks to us. All right. The fifth way he speaks is in clear, distinct voices. From other people, right? Now, not just any people. You, these have to be people who have proven themselves to be in line with the, the will of the Father. Just because they're your spouse doesn't mean they have a clear, distinct voice that's coming from God. Just because they're your BFF doesn't mean they have a clear, distinct voice coming from God. They have to have demonstrated that they have the connection the spiritual relationship with God that would warrant you hearing, believing, and receiving what they say. But one of the ways God does speak, one of the way we do hear God's voice is through the clear, distinct voices from other people. 1 Corinthians 12 and 8 says, to one person, the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. Wise advice. Not just any old advice, it's got to be wise. And because we're connected, we are the righteousness of God. We are God's chosen people, royal priesthood, a holy nation. We should know when someone's giving us wise advice or just speaking some foolishness. Let me finish with the scripture. To one person, the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The connection to Holy Spirit will let you know if this is wise, if this is special, if this is of God. Got to train your ears to hear. 
Cause you you it'll it'll, it'll be like your ears tickle, itch. Something's bothering them when you hear some foolishness. And that's just foolishness. It irritates your ears. It irritates your heart. It irritates your mind when it's just foolishness. You know foolishness when you hear foolishness. You know when someone's giving you non-wise advice. If you're connected to God. But see, you got to keep your connection right. I was talking to um someone after, what was it about? Like today. Maybe it was after service on Sunday. And we were talking about properly hearing. You know, we who are the righteousness of God know whether or not it's properly from God or not. But you also know when you're not properly hearing, when you're not properly responding. And we're talking about disciplining your ears tonight. But you you know when you're not properly hearing. You know when you're not properly receiving. You know when you're not properly responding. And then you've got to adjust accordingly. Like you can't realize that you have some symptoms and don't take your medicine. It's like, what do people do? Um, someone texted me and said they, they had to take the vaccine and they took Advil to alleviate the, the pain at the injection site. You know to take medication when something's wrong. When you're thinking wrong, when you're not hearing properly, when you're hearing improperly, hearing wrong, when you're responding wrong, it's time for some medicine. Maybe you haven't been in tune with Holy Spirit over the last days, weeks, months. I don't know. Maybe you've not rolled over so easy, rolled over and pushed play to hear the service on Sunday, the word of God from your man of God. Maybe you've not been paying attention to what you've been hearing. It's time for some medicine. You can't just not, you can't realize that something's wrong and not get yourself medicated. That's like having all kinds of symptoms and just not going to the doctor. You got all kinds of things wrong, all kinds of stuff's going on, and you're not going to the doctor. That's some foolishness. You responding to people all kinds of crazy ways, you hearing all kinds of wrong ways, your heart's feeling all kind of wrong and you're not getting into your medicine, you better get an overdose. You better dose yourself up. How do we, do we hear from God? We hear from God in his word, the spirit of God. We hear from our conscience. We hear through God's creations, just observing all his great creations. And we hear from clear, distinct voices from other people. We also hear the last two that I've put together are through visions and dreams, as well as signs and coincidences. How do we hear from God? Through visions and dreams and signs and coincidences. Visions and dreams are godly sent images and ideas in our minds when we're awake or asleep. God sent images, visions. We're awake, so we're very clear on it being there. Sometimes we're asleep and we get these visions and these dreams. Signs and coincidences, definitely when we're awake. Isaiah 30 and 31 says, your own ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. Your own ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice. You know, people say something said. That's that voice behind you. That's the spirit of God saying, do this, don't do this. Say this, don't say that. This is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. The word of God is a blueprint. It instructs us, remember? It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, showing us the direction, giving us the steps, ordering our path structuring the ways that we should go. It's just a matter of will we use it. And don't use it just because you have a situation. Use it as regular medication. Let's see, allergy medication people take regularly. Uh, I don't know, high blood pressure medicine people take regularly. Uh, I don't know, whatever people take regularly. Take your word of God regularly. Because then you'll be able to Romans 12 too. 
not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you'll know what good, perfect, pleasing, and acceptable will of the Father is. You won't know if you're not taking your medicine. And stop being those people that take the medicine for a little while, feel better, and then you're like, I don't need that anymore. Lies and deceit. That's just lies and deceit. You always need it. You always need it. You always need What's left out of always? Not nothing. Always need it. Who knew we would need it so much this past year? The pandemic. Who would have ever thought we would live to see a pandemic? It's like, that seems like something that would have happened years ago hundreds of years ago, and we just read about it in the history books. Nope, we right here making history, living through this pandemic. Praise Jesus. You got to discipline your ears to hear. Regulate your ears. Direct them. Instruct them. Properly perceive it. You're in control of those. No one else. Just you. I have a little group I meet with at my job. Kids trying to empower them to have positive self-esteem i told them they're in control of what's here no one else you don't allow someone else to make you think things they want you to think the word of god I mean, you know I, I i can't infuse the word of god there so many times mm. some of them start talking about god though so that blesses my life but anyway you gotta teach your ears to hear let me give you a few scriptures as we prepare to close John 8, 47, 8, 4, 7. John 8, 47. Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why, I'm not even going to say you. The reason why some don't hear them is that they are not of God. The scripture says the reason why you don't hear is because you're not of God. I'm trying to be nice and say the reason why some don't hear. Are you part of that some? Luke twenty two thirty two, 32. But I have pleaded in prayer for you that your faith should not fail so that when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brother. That's that uh, scripture uh, Minister Denise used on Sunday. You get yourself together. It ties right back into the fifth um, benefit of, of having spiritual ears when you can be a godly example for others. You got to think about others. Okay, and think about you can think about a struggle you have now and you can also think about a struggle you've had before right and so in thinking about a previous struggle or a current struggle you think about how helpful it was or is or will be for someone else to to nurture you to help you through whatever you're dealing with you got to be that same person for others okay you've gotten yourself together help somebody else get themselves together you're sowing those seeds because you never know when you're going to need that planting, that seed sowing in your life again. All right. Romans 2.13. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous. Mm. But the doers of the law who will be justified. So, yeah, you're teaching yourself to hear. So now what do you do with what you hear? Train yourself to properly hear every Sunday, every Wednesday, or now Tuesdays, the men on Monday. Train yourself to properly hear and then do something. Don't let it just be something. Oh, it's seven o'clock. Let me get on the, the, the women's fellowship call. No, get on with a purpose, with an intent to properly hear and then do something with what you heard. It starts first in here. The next place is right in your house with spouses and children and whomever else lives in your house with you. That, that's how you start practicing it on first. <laughs> They're right there. Like that's your immediate homework. You log off and get the working. Immediate work. James 1.22 ties into Romans 2.13. Let me reread Romans 2.13 and then I'll read James 1.22 and we'll be done. Romans 2.13 reads again. It is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. You, you, you're not righteous just because you hear. You're righteous because you properly hear and then do something. You're righteous because you hear and properly hear and do something with what you heard. James 1.22 says, so don't merely listen to the word. 
Don't just listen. You sitting there, you watching TV, ain't trying to listen to me. The two don't go together. You catching part of what I'm saying and part of what they're saying, they don't go together. You on your Facebook, on other things on Facebook, because I know I'm on Facebook. I don't know if you can be on Facebook while I'm on Facebook or maybe you're on Facebook on another device. That's just merely hearing. It said, don't just merely listen and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Another translation, that was NIV translation. Another translation, ESV says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Amen. Disciplining your ears. I'm going to stay in this vein. Proper, we've got to properly be who God has called us to be so that we can reign, so that we can take over. If we're not properly being who God has called us to be, reigning and taking over isn't going to be a possibility. With God, all things are possible. Anything is possible to them that believe. All right, ladies, smooches. Stay safe. Keep your mask on. Properly wearing your mask. This is not properly wearing your mask. Properly wearing your mask is covering your nose and your mouth. Stay safe. Make proper choices. Work on properly hearing. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for Bible study. Father God, we thank you for the word that was shared on tonight on disciplining our ears. We loose your anointing over our ears, Lord God, and call them anointed to properly hear your words in clear direction so that we know where to go and what to do and how to go and how to do. Lord God, so in this year of the rain, the takeover, we may do just that. We honor you and praise you for your word, Lord God. We thank you for those who have assembled themselves to listen. We thank you for those who will listen later. We thank you for those who will listen again. And we praise and glorify you, Father. It is in Jesus' name, my Lord. We pray these prayers. Amen, amen, amen. Bye. See you later. Stay safe. Work hard on your computers at home. <laughs> Bye. I wish I could touch you. I wish I could see you. I see your names, but I wish I could really see you. Okay. Yes, the interaction. <sighs> okay, bye. I don't know how to take this off, so let's see. In live video, maybe I'll do that. Okay, you guys stay safe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Smooches.